Indeed, and today is not only a celebration of the Springboks, but a s celebration of sport in general. And I'm sure a lot of other sporting codes would like to replicate the success of the Springboks. We know that our cricket team, the Proteas, they are through to the semi-final of the Cricket World Cup. And boy, oh boy, would they love to win uh, their first ever ICC trophy. And of course, uh, Banyana Banyana, they've done us proud in the past, uh, going to the last 16 of the FIFA Women's World Cup. They are now keen on making it to the Olympic Games. So a lot has been said about the Springboks, but other sporting codes also want to jump onto that bandwagon and enjoy similar success. Of course, East London is not only known for its rugby, but also as the mecca of boxing. And we are about to talk a bit about not only boxing, but also uh, sport, women in sport, which is a very important subject in South Africa at the moment. I am joined by Usesu Nolovic to tell us more. Thank you so much indeed for your time. You are a ring announcer. First of all, how did you get into ring announcing? <laughs> um, thank you so much, Ronald, for, for having me and a good morning to viewers and listeners at home. Um, I grew up uh, in Middle Drift, a place where my grandfather used to watch boxing and, and you know, and we all get excited and watch about Dingan Tobela or Matlala. And, and so when I moved to East London, uh, which is a, the mecca of boxing, the home of boxing, and, and obviously Tanzania is Punzan, Dangan Village, all surrounded by boxers. So that's where um, I can say I, I, I started to enjoy and watching it live. That's where my love for boxing grew. So I was like, okay, with my voice, what can I do um, just to, to, to be involved within the sport? Obviously, I, I, I don't want to box, um, but, but what, what, what can I do? I said, okay, let me use my voice and be a ring announcer. So I went through all the steps of applying uh, to be a licensed one through my provincial um, manager, Mr. Jacobs, you know, all the steps, and then the annual fee, Boxing South Africa, then you have to up submit your application and then they approve and then yeah you are um yeah the certain test that we wrote but yeah so i am um, a licensed uh, boxing um south africa ring announcer of course we are in the mecca of boxing yeah. as i mentioned earlier the likes of uh, vuyani bungu mm. welcome nita zolani mm. tete bulelo potile the list goes on yeah. they come here former world champions but one gets a feeling that boxing has sort of struggled over the years mm, mm, why what what is mm. the issue i i think we've we've, we've lost uh, uh, touch boxing uh, over the years for some reason it, it declined um and now it's only now that boxing south africa is saying uh, renew uh, grow and, and transform um so that it can uh, return to its former glory the stadiums your, your orient theater used to be full into capacity but not anymore but then what, what have you done wrong maybe um because boxing is known to be a professional sport but now it's, it's treated um, not professionally anymore so now uh, boxing South Africa has that challenge to make sure that one even small things like respecting time um, when it's it's a way in uh, making sure that uh, the boxers are, are well prepared um, the managers everyone else who taking it uh, seriously yes um, there was um, the past the, the COVID yes um, everything was like that uh, silent but everyone now is starting picking up a little I must say, um, we Boxing South Africa is trying, um, but not hard enough because I believe personally um, they haven't uh, got to the, that child in Gamdobo, that child in Nusikisiki, that child in Kobo Kobo, uh, in Mush, and all those places, uh, a little by little. But um, I think we can learn a thing or two from, from Springbok, how they, um, they do things, you know. And today we are here celebrating them as world champions, but I think we can do the same with boxing. But I, I believe uh, Ronald, it starts with, with the management. It starts um, with, with, with the taking the sport seriously. Those, the, the custodian of the sports, if we can start taking them seriously, even the fans, even those who do not understand boxing, those who do not understand how to uh, cricket, um, who do not understand uh, rugby, but now they are here celebrating because they are South Africans. They are all proud of uh, being South Africans because this is not for, um, for, for spring, but for the entire country. So if we can go back there and make sure that the get the basics right. Talk to us about the role of women in sport. We've seen the success of Banyana Banyana, African champions. We've seen, um, you know, the improvement in uh, the women's cricket mm. team, as well as the rugby team. 
Are women now being taken seriously in sport? Or what needs to be done? There has been issues about mm. the pay gap where mm. men significantly earned more than women as professional sports people. That's a challenge we are, we are currently facing. We, we, we are getting there. But, but not um, um, not as fast as we would like. Um, we have um, the challenge that you, you, you have made, it's because sports generally just considered to be men's sports, especially boxing, because I mean boxing. So, so if we can, um, as a country, maybe with the help of Department of Sports, Department of Education, um, all the stakeholders involved, making sure that from a primary level, if you can make sure that we groom those young girls and, and, and make them ready for the world, um, to face the world in their different uh, uh, sporting codes then um, I think uh, from the was now we were just taking them um, and already they are teenagers or some already um, I mean young women if we can take them from primary level and and teach them um, then I'm sure we can produce um, good quality uh, sports women in the country uh, but now if you want to just grab them while they are finishing high school and say come do you want a box come and uh, I don't think that is, is working and then again um, we see women there we don't want women to be uh, just the front. We want women who are going to be our voice when they are there in those boardrooms, in those discussions. Um, we want the next mama or, or, or mama or reality dwaba. We want to see them. Um, even from here, from, from East London, if we are saying we, we are very serious about making sure that we groom them. Um, I know Boxing South Africa has, has, has some programs now, the rise of women in boxing currently, the series um, traveling all over the country in all provinces. Even last year, women in boxing in, in Devon that was launched uh, but I still I feel it's not enough let's take the, the, the boxing if in, in fact each and every sporting code to make sure that on, on Wednesdays like we used in, in, during my <laughs> era to make sure that every afternoon on Wednesday kids are there sports um, you know um, is being played those kids so that they, we can take them off from the streets mm, I you know? want I want to go into that next point and uh, you touch on a very important point about women in boxing mm -hmm. It's not a subject that we often talk about. We do know that there are people playing their part, the likes of Mbali Zanzi, mm, who's yes, based in yes, Kadeha. Yes. Uh, she's a promoter, a very mm. prominent one at that. But how do you convince a child, a, a girl, to take up boxing? It, 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 I think it's the way that we convince your, your, the likes of Tafu when, 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 when the, the boxers are going to the gym every afternoon. Take that little girl with you. Expose them to that, you know, even if the child feels that I don't want to box. There are so many other opportunities, like your ring announcer, um, like your, 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 your being a promoter, um, the likes of Malinga in, in KZN and, and Zanzi. So if we don't bring them to say, come, let's watch, come, let's go to Orient Theatre, there's a, there's a fight there, let's go to the ICC, so that they can be exposed, and then it will depend if the child is really interested in being a boxer or in being a manager or being a promoter or being a ring announcer or a judge, or because we, we are now running out of, um, Umama is, 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 is um, what's her name? sorry, I forgot her name now, she's getting old, we need more um, referees, we need more judges, um, women, but if we do not expose these girls, these young girls to boxing, I don't think we're doing enough. I personally don't think I am doing enough um, to make sure that I go to each and every primary school and say, come, there's a match. Uh, principal borrow me two kids. You know? so, so I think there's a lot that needs to be done if we can all stand up and, and take this and be intentional about introducing um, our kids, especially young girls, to all different sporting codes that, that we have. Then I think by, by doing so, we can um, have... Um, another, uh, uh, you know, champions, you know, we, you know, we can still be wearing green and gold. So. Sissi, before I let you go, what is the significance of today's occasion for the people of the Eastern Cape? Before I get to that, uh, Ronald, I think um, I must highlight a thing or two that I wish every sporting coach can learn from what um, the, the, the Springbok uh, uh, team has done. One, the, the hashtag stronger together. If you look at the entire team, um, what, what Sia said at the last interview to say this is not for, for them, but it's for the country. And you have to be a South African to understand um, we are facing lots of uh, challenges as the country, but sports unite us. They are the, they're giving us hope. They're giving us, um, you know, that uh, we, we can do it um, kind of. Um, so if we can make sure that um, we have uh, right people and um, 
know, at the management level, and then to make sure that we, 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 we it's, it's, it's a team. It's a team. It's not for certain individuals. What Rasi did to say all those, Mapimbi and Mark, were, were, were um, injured, come because they played a part. So the win is, is for them as well. So come and join us. So that, 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 that shows that um, they have strong leadership. So if we can have strong leadership in all different sporting codes, that would be great. Lastly, Ronald, um, what Sia did when a um, few minutes uh, after the, the Wilson, the last blue, he went to Colby. To, to give him a big hug. That's empathy. So as a leader, those qualities, we need people who have good qualities um, um, of leadership. That gives hope even to those who didn't even get a chance um, to play your arm and, 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 and the likes. So if we can make sure that one, uh, we learn that strong, we are stronger together as each and every, and on the field and off the field, on the ring and off the ring, in the, those boardrooms and off the boardroom, because if it, leaders of the country can learn a thing or two from, from the Springbok. We are stronger together. Then how do we then move forward from, from um, now, after this is the last tour for this year? So what, how, do, how do we do then? How do we keep the spirit uh, burning until the next four years? So as the leaders of the country, stronger together. I think let's, let's move with that as a country, and then I think we, we will be good. Um, and lastly, your, your question, I know I've been saying lastly, um, um, your question, we still have a challenge. Our schools, um, um, we, need, we need to have proper infrastructure, we need to have, um, uh, you know, bring back sports in schools, and, and not only because the president will be there. For an example, the Inyobeni um, victims, that stadium, the grass, the municipality, you are only because of memorial service. You can go there. So, but if we can, all these departments, I'm, 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 you know, I'm challenging them. The Department of Sports, the Department of, of, of uh, Education, the local municipalities across the province, if they can make sure that and they make sure that, and we celebrate those kids, the small wins, Athletic South Africa, um, um, Cricket South Africa, Boxing South Africa, uh, rugby, and all these things. Those are craven weeks. We hear them. Okay, they were craven weeks. What about those kids in the rural um, villages? Was, uh, gone are those days that a child must be scouted from a rural and then take that child to play at a former model. So, so I don't mention, mention names. We know from cricket what happened to Malikaya, what happened to Sia Kualisi. There are those kids who are not um, have uh, that, that, that benefit. What It means their talent is like they, they, they will never play uh, away green jersey because no one goes to them and scout them. Unfortunately, the parents are not, um, you know, have uh, the, the financial muscle. They will never make it. So there's a lot that still needs to be done as a country. And but if we do this together and we uh, well, can make sure that we we, we, we we practice and we take this forward, I'm sure we'll 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 get there. Even if it's one point, right. one one percent at a time. <laughs> <I'm wrong. laughs> Thank you very much indeed Thank and you. wise words. Well, stronger Thank together. You. And I think it was Nelson Mandela who once said to Melo that uh, sport has the power to unite a nation. And we've seen that quite clearly throughout the course of this uh, uh, tour uh, that has been taking place in uh, places like Pretoria, Johannesburg, Soweto, Cape Town, Durban. And now it's the turn of the Eastern Cape. And we are looking forward to that.